Okay, so this is step three of our A beater progression drill. If you haven't seen step one or two, just go look on the YouTube channel for them. You're going to need to see those before you understand what we're talking about here. Um, each step leads to the next step. It's a progression that has been helping a lot of my clients, and that's why we wanted to share it with everyone. Um, so step three starts just where we kind of finished with step two. So step two is just learning how to do the sort of egg beater motion so that the finish was uh, more continuous that, and it would lead into the recovery. So that's what step three is basically, is how do we recover now? So we're gonna watch Lissa here on the Vasa. So as she finishes with that left arm there, you can start to see sort of she pushes away. You can still see her palm is facing behind her. She comes forward. She's not letting her elbow rotate down or her arm straighten out. She's trying to make sure her elbow is trying to move forward the entire time. You can see it on both sides as we move slowly here. So it's not about necessarily uh, extending or reaching. It's more about trying to set an anchor point as far out as front as you as you can versus how far can you reach. Those two things don't always equal the same. Um, just because I reach far doesn't mean I'm going to set an anchor point far. Uh, and, and more likely, the further I try to attempt to reach, the more likely I'm not going to set my anchor point very far because I'll, I'll overextend through my, my elbow. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to learn is, is how do we set a good catch from having a good finish and a good recovery and a good entry. Those all have to happen sort of in the right sequence correctly so everything leads to good movement overall. So from this front view, you kind of see that she's taking a little bit of a wide recovery on the bench because she's not rotating. So we have to use our imagination a little bit here, right? Freestyle, you rotate in the pool. So that rotation would provide some extra mobility that she can't or should not even try to do on the Vasa. Um, so make sure you don't try to pick your elbow up high like you're trying to swim. It's not the same. So if I go back a little bit here, once we add rotation, and you'll see this in the water, once we add rotation, you're going to see how her arm becomes a little bit more narrow above the water and below the water. All right, so let's see what it looks like when she goes into the pool to swim. So you can see right away her elbow is higher or more forward than her head before it enters into the water, right? So, as she comes through, you can see how she's pushing away on that left side. You can see, see her palm. You see how her arm is much more narrow than it was on the bench. It's only because of rotation. She's not actually trying to make it more narrow, okay? So it's okay to practice a wide recovery on the bench. You can see how she keeps as on this right side, how she exit, exits the water with a good paddle. The back of her palm basically is facing towards the camera. And that good paddle goes into a good recovery. I like to see a recovery where the elbow is off center from the body. Because if the elbow is directly on top of somebody, um, it, limit, it, it limits mobility. It's not going to be very safe for your, your shoulder. Um, but it also will make you sink because if you have weight directly over you, it, it will make you sink. So moving forward, kind of see how this all works together. So here is it in real time. So one step goes to the next step, goes to the next step. It's really important to take your time during this progression. All right, so just from the front view, you can really easily see from the front how that elbow is trying to stay forward as she enters the water. Using her hip to help her elbow enter the water. Under the water, you can start to see how she's going to generate her paddle. See that that that's the paddle that we worked on in the very first video, making sure that her forearm and her hand are pushing back. So it keeps pushing back. 
until she exits. And then when she enters again, you can see very easily her fingertips are the first thing to enter the water, and her forearm, then her elbow. We have found this egg beater drill to be very, very helpful for learning not just how to catch and generate power and to finish, but how it all connects above the water as well, and how one step affects the next step, and how important it is for everything to kind of work together versus isolating movements. You want to isolate to understand the movement, and once you isolate and understand that movement, you've got to learn how to stitch everything together, and that's what this uh, egg beater progression drill is all about. So if you haven't seen all three videos, go back, watch the first two, watch this one, it should help you understand just exactly how you're supposed to finish, pull, catch. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you.